Good afternoon and welcome back to Detroit. Lisa Martin here with John Furrier. We are live, day two of our coverage of KubeCon, Cloud Native Con North America. John, we've had great conversations yeah. all day yesterday, half a day today so far. We're talking all things, well, not all things Kubernetes, so much more than that. We also have to talk about storage and data management solutions yeah. for Kubernetes projects, because that's obviously critical. Yeah, I mean, the big trend here is Kubernetes is going mainstream, has been for a while. You know, the adoption is crossing over, it's crossing the chasm, and with that, you're seeing security concerns, you're seeing things being, gaps being filled, but enterprise grade is really the, the, the story. It's going enterprise, that's managed services, that's professional services, that's basically making things work at scale. This next segment hits that, that part, and we're going to talk about it in great length. With one of our alumni, Morali Tirumali is back. VP and GM of Portworks Peer Storage. Great to have you back, Marlene. Yeah, absolutely, delightful to be here. So I was looking on the website, number one in Kubernetes storage three years in a row. Yep. Awesome, what's Portworks doing here at KubeCon? Well, I'll tell you, uh, we, our engineering crew has been so productive and hard at work that I almost can't decide what to kind of tell you. But I thought what, what, uh, what I thought I would do is kind of tell you that we are in forefront of two major trends in the world of Kubernetes, right? And uh, the, the two trends that I see are, one is as a service. So, is trend number one. So, it's not software eating the world anymore. That's, that's old, old, old news. It's as a service, easifying the world. The world wants easy. We all are, you know, subscribers to things like Netflix. We've been using Salesforce or other HR functions. Everything is as a service, and in the world of Kubernetes, it's a sign of that maturity that John was talking about yeah. as a platform that now, as a service, is the big trend. And so, headline number one, if you will, is that Portworks is leading in the uh, data management world for the Kubernetes by providing, we're going all in on easy, uh, and as a service, so everything we do, we are satisfying it. Right, so uh, if, you if you think about uh, if you think about this, that that there are uh, really uh, most of the people who are consuming Kubernetes are people who are building platforms for their dev users, and dev users want self-service. That's one of the advantages of, of of Kubernetes, and the more it is serviceized and made as a service, the more ready to consume it is. And so we are announcing at the show that uh, we have you know, the basic Kubernetes data management as a service, HADR as a service, we have backup as a service, and we have database as a service. So these are the three major components of data, and all of those are being made available as a service. And in fact, we're offering and announcing at the show our backup as a service freemium version, where you can get free forever uh, a terabyte of, of uh, you know, uh, stuff to do for Kubernetes for, for, forever. Congratulations on the announcement, totally in line with what the market wants. Developers want self-service, they also want simplicity. By the way, they'll leave if they don't like the service. Correct. So that, you, <laughs> you know that. Uh, before we get into some more specifics, I want to yeah. uh, ask you on the industry and some of the point solutions you have. What, it's been two years since the acquisition with Pure Storage. Uh -huh. Can you just give an update on how it's gone? Obviously, as a service, you guys are hitting all your marks. Developers love it. Storage is a big part of the game right now, as well as these environments. Yeah. Um, what's the update post-acquisition? Two years, you had a great offering, so, came right in, Portworks. Yeah, so look, uh, John, you're, you're, you're a veteran of the industry <laughs> and have seen lots of acquisitions, right? And uh, I've been acquired twice before, myself, so, uh, you know, there's, there's always best practices and poor practices in terms of acquisitions. And uh, I'm, you know, really delighted to say I think this, this acquisition has had some of the best practices. Let me just name a couple of them, right? One of them is just cultural fit, right? Cultural fit is great. Uh, entrepreneurs, anybody, it's not just entrepreneurs, everybody loves to work in a place they enjoy working with, with people that they, you know, thrive uh, when they when they interact with and so the cultural fit yeah. with with pure is fantastic the other one is the strategic intent that pure had when they acquired us is still true and so that goes a long way you know in terms of an investment profile in terms of the ability to kind of leverage assets within the company so pure had uh, kind of disrupted the world of storage using flash and they wanted to disrupt 
higher up the stack using Kubernetes, and that's kind of been our role inside their strategy, and it's, it's still true. So culture, strategic intent, yeah. product market fit as well. You, were, you weren't just an asset for customers or acquisition and then let the founders go do their next thing. You were part of their growth play. Absolutely, right? The, the beauty of, of the kind of product market fit is, let's talk about the market, is we have been always focused on the global 2K, and that is at the heart of you know, Pure's 10,000 strong customer base, right? They have very strong presence in the, in the global 2K, and we, we allow them to kind of go to those uh, same folks uh, with, with the offering. So satisfying everything that you do, what's, for me as a business, whether I'm a uh, financial services organization, I'm a hospital, I'm a retailer, what's in it for me as a yeah, customer? Yeah, so the, the, what's in it for, for me is two things. It's speed and ease of use, which in a way are related, but, but, but you know, one is uh, when something is provided as a service, it's much more consumable. It's yeah. instantly ready. It's like instant oatmeal, right? You yeah. just get it, just add hot water, and it's there. Yeah. So uh, the world of, of uh, IT has moved from owning large data centers, right? That used to be like 25 years ago. Uh, and running those data centers better than everybody else. To move to, let me just consume a data center in the form of a cloud, right? So satisfying the cloud part of the uh, data center. Now, people are saying, well, I expect that for software and services. And I don't want it just from the public cloud. I want it from my own IT department. This is old news. Yeah. And so, uh, the, 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 the big news here is how fast Kubernetes has kind of moved. Everything, you know, you take a lot of these changes, Kubernetes is a poster child for things happening faster than the last wave. And in the last couple of years, I would say, the as a service model has really kind of thrived in the world of Kubernetes, and developers want to be able to get it fast, and the second thing is they want to be able to operate it fast. Self-service is the mm -hmm. other benefit. Yeah. So speed and self-service are both benefits of, of Yeah, and, and the thing that's come up clearly in theCUBE, this is going to be part of the headlines, we'll probably end up getting a lot of highlights from, and telling my team to make a note of this, is that developers are going to be, be the, the business. If you, if you take digital transformation to its conclusion, they're not a department that serves the business, they are the business. That means exactly. they have to be more productive. So developer productivity has been the top story. Yes, security as a service, all these things. These are, these are examples to make developers more productive. But one of the things that came up, and I want to get your reaction to, yeah. is, is that when you have disruption, and, and the storage business, you know what disruption <laughs> it means, because there's been a whole discussion around disruptive operations, when storage goes down, you have back and DR and failover. If there's a disruption, that changes the nature of invisible infrastructure. Developers want invisible infrastructure. That's the exactly. future steady state. So if there's a disruption in storage, yeah. it can't affect the productivity and the tool chains and the workflows of yep. developers. Right. So how do you guys look at that? Because you're a critical component. Storage as a service is a huge thing. Yeah. Storage has to, has to work seamlessly and let's keep the developers out of the weeds. John, I think what, what, what you put your finger on is Another huge trend in the world of Kubernetes, we're at KubeCon after all, which is really where, where all the leading practitioners uh, both come and the leading vendors are. So here's the second trend that we are leading uh, and, and actually I think is happening not just with us but with other folks in the industry. And that is, you know, the world of DevOps. Like DevOps has been such a catchphrase for all of yeah. us in the industry the last five years. And it's been both a combination of cultural change as well as uh, technology change. Here's what the latest is on the, in the world of DevOps. DevOps is now crystallized. It's not some kind of mysterious art form that you read about. <laughs> How people are practicing DevOps is, it's broken into two, two things now. There is the platform part. So DevOps is now a bunch of platforms. And the other part of DevOps is a bunch of practices. So a little bit on both these. The platforms in the world of Kubernetes, there's only three platforms, right? There's the orchestration platforms, the you know, EKS, the open chips of the world and so on. There are the data management platforms, people like uh, Portworx, and the third is security platforms, right? Well, you know, Palo Alto Networks, uh, others, Aqua are all in this. So these are the three platforms, and there are platform engineering teams now that many of our largest customers, some of the largest banks, the largest service providers, they're all operating as a Kubernetes platform engineering team. And then now developers, to your point, 
developers are in the practice of being able to use these platforms to launch new services. So the, uh, the actual IT ops, the ops are run by developers now, and they can do it on these platforms, and the platform engineering team provide that as an ease of use, and they're there to troubleshoot when problems happen. So the idea of DevOps as a ops practice and a platform is the newest uh, thing, and, and Portworks and Pure Storage are leading in the world of data management platforms there. Talk about a customer example that you think really articulates the value that Portworks and Pure Storage delivers from a data management perspective. Yeah, so there's so many examples. One of the, one of the uh, longest running examples we have is a very, very large service provider that you, know, uh, you all know and probably use. And uh, they have been using us uh, in the cable kind of uh, set-top box or ca cable box business. They get streams of data from, from cable boxes all over the world. They collect it all in a centralized, large kind of thing and run Elasticsearch and analytics on it. Now, uh, what they've done is they couldn't keep up with this at the scale and the depth, right? The speed of, of activity and the distributed nature of the activity. The only way to solve this was to use something like Kubernetes, manage uh, with Spark, coming, bringing all the data in into deep, deep, deep silos of storage, which are all running, not even on a SAN, but on kind of, you know, very deep uh, uh, terabytes and terabytes of, uh, of storage. So all of this is orchestrated with the help of Portworks, and there's a platform engineering team. We are building that platform for them uh, with some of these other components that allows them to kind of do analytics and, and make some changes in real time. Uh, huge kind of uh, uh, setup for, yeah. for that. Well, you guys got the right architecture. I love the vision. I love what you guys are doing. I think this is right in line with Pure's. They've always been disruptors. I remember when we first interviewed the CEO when they started. Yep. They, they stayed on path, they didn't waver. EMC was a big player. They ended up taking their lunch and dinner um, as well. And they beat them in the marketplace. But now you got this traction here. So I have to ask you, how's the business? What's the results look like? You're the GM, cloud yeah. native business unit of a storage company that's transformed and transforming. Yeah, What's you know, it's interesting. We just hit the two year anniversary, right, uh, John? And so what we did was uh, just kind of like step back and hey, to you know, we're running so hard, you just take a step back. And we've tripled the business in the two years uh, since the acquisition, the two years before. Uh, and, and we were growing through COVID, so uh, you know, that, that's uh, quite a feat. And we've tripled the number of people, the amount of uh, engineering investments we have, the number of uh, uh, go-to-market investments have, have, been, have been awesome. So the business is going really well. Though I will say that I think you know, we, have, we can't be, we, we, we're watching the market closely. Um, uh, you know, as a former CEO, I, you have to kind of learn <laughs> to read the tea leaves <laughs> when you invest. And I think, you know, what I would say is we're proceeding with caution in the next two quarters. I view business transformation as not a cancelable activity. So that's the, that's the good news, right? Our customers are large it's never enterprises. Gonna stop. Right. All they're going to do is say, hey, they're going to put their hand, their hand was always going right on the dial. Now they're kind of putting their hand on the dial going, hey, where, what is happening? But my, my own sense of this is that uh, people will continue to invest through it. The question is at what level? And I also think that this is a six month kind of uh, watch, the, watch where, where we put the dial. So Q4 uh, and Q1, I think are kind of, you know, uh, we have our, our watch kind of, uh, watch the market sign. Uh, but I have the highest confidence. What does your gut tell you? You're an entrepreneur. My, What's my it? gut says that we'll go through a little bit of a cautious investment period in the next six months. And after that, I think we're going to be back in back full, full in the crazy growth that we've always been. Yeah, we're going to grow, by the way, in the I next two quarters. I think it's not going to stop. I think I'm more, I'm more bullish. I think it's going to be some, you know, weeding out of some overinvestment pre-COVID or pre-bubble. But I think tech's going to continue to grow. I don't yeah. see it stopping. And, and the investment is going to be on these core platforms. See, back to the platform story. It's going to be in these core platforms and on easifying everything. Let's consume it better rather than let's go kind of experiment with a whole bunch of things all over the map, right? So you'll see less experimentation and more kind of let's harvest some of the investments we've made in the last couple of years. And actually be able to, to uh, enable 
companies in any industry to truly be data companies because you Absolutely. talked about as a service, we all have these expectations that any service we want, we can get it. Yes. There's no delay because yes. patience has gone yeah. from the pandemic. So it is kind of, uh, you know, uh, tightening up the screws on what they've built, they, uh, you, you know, adding some polish to it, adding some more capability. Like I said, a, a, a combination of harvesting yep. and new investing. It's a combination, I think, is what we're going to see. Yeah. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to? You talked about some of the, the growth things in the investment, but as we round out Q4 and head into a new year, what are you excited about? Yeah, so, you know, I mentioned our as a service kind of platform. Uh, the global 2K for us has been uh, uh, a set of customers who we co-create stuff with. And so, one of the other set of things that we are very excited about and announcing is, uh, because we're deployed at scale, we're, we're, we have upgraded our backend, so we have now the ability to go to a million IOPS and more, and, and for, for the right backends. And so, uh, Kubernetes is a add-on which will not slow down your, your core uh, base infrastructure. Uh, second thing that, that uh, we, we have is added a bunch of capability in the disaster recovery business continuity front. You know, we always had like metro kind of distance uh, DR, we had long distance DR, we've added a near sync DR, so now we can provide disaster recovery and business continuity for metro distances across continents and across the planet, right? That's kind of a major, change uh, that we've done. The third thing is we've added the capability for file, block, and object. So now by adding object, we're really a complete solution. So it is really that maturity of the business yeah. that you start seeing as enterprises move to embracing a platform approach, deploying it much more widely. You talked about the early majority, yeah. right? And so what they require is more enterprise class capability, and those are all the things that we've been adding and we're really looking forward to it. Well, sounds like tremendous uh, evolution and maturation of Portworks in the two years since it's been uh, with Pure Storage. You talked about the cultural alignment. Great stuff that you're achieving. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Great stuff ahead. And well, having fun, let's not forget that. That's yeah, important right. too. Life's too short to do it. <laughs> it is, that. you're All right. right. Yeah, thank we you. will definitely, as always on theCUBE, keep our eyes on this space. Merle, it's been great to have you back on the program. Thank you for joining, great John. Thank you so much. It's a our pleasure, pleasure as always. For our guest, I'm John Furrier, Lisa Martin here, live in Detroit with theCUBE at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 22. We'll be back after a short break.